everyone and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I recently did a poll on my YouTube channel here asking what kind of videos y'all were looking for me to create next and the overwhelming decision was animals. And since I kind of have an affinity for the ocean and sea turtles and sea life, I decided to go with a turtle especially since there's an ocean theme going on at Dollar Tree right now for the wood cutouts. So I found a cute little turtle, had some awesome palette choices here. There's even some cute ones with sea turtles in them. And, you know, I was thinking kind of like the sand and sea, like a little ocean blue with some metallic sparkly browns. But then I saw this palette up here and I was like, oh, I need that pop of color. So <laughs> come check out what I decided to create with this color palette. Okay, so now that I have somewhere in mind to start, I'm going to show you the colors I actually went with. So in addition to white and matte black for the background, these are the colors that I used on this project. So we have a raspberry multi-surface. They're all, all these are from Decoart. I have the raspberry multi-surface, coral blush, cadmium yellow, bright green, eucalyptus leaf, bluegrass green, desert turquoise, Bahama blue, metallic teal, metallic rich espresso, and then a milk chocolate. And I will also post that in the description as well. And for this project, I actually also only used happy dotting tools to create this design. And these are the sizes of the set that I used for this project. All right, so here is our just cute little turtle, which is a cutout from the Dollar Tree. And it comes in like a five or six pack. I'm just using matte black and a flat brush to paint a background here on this little guy to get us started. I don't wanna get any paint on my mat there, so I'm just gonna take it off here and I'm gonna paint both sides and the edges black so I can have like a nice background that the colors really pop off of. Sponge brushes work really well for this too, especially for getting on the edges and kind of sponging the paint on to get a nice even coat. I will say that these pieces of wood soak up the paint really quickly, so be prepared for that but also if you do a quick coat of varnish it will kind of help so the paint doesn't soak in as much and your tools will work pretty well on it um, also. So here's the first tool I'm using. These are Happy Dotting Company tools the size 4.0 flat top for our center dot which I just kind of eyeballed but you can measure. This turtle's about three inches long. And then this is kind of like a ball stylus end. So we're going to do our plus sign for the center here to start off our mandala design. So top, bottom, east, west, west, east, <laughs> and then in between each of those. And then we have a good base okay. here now starting for our design. End. Is still kind of a flat top here and I'm using that Bahama blue to go in between the dots that we had put down in our initial circle and okay so I know initially I said I only used happy dotting tools but I forgot I had used the etcher at some point here so but it's easily fixed if you have a toothpick or mechanical pencil or something pointy in your home that you can just use to drag one little line of paint out. A really, really sharp pencil will do the trick too. But the etcher tool I just grabbed accidentally instead there and I had forgotten that I used it. But really we're just wanting something that's small and pointy that will drag out that paint to a point for you in between the white dots. So while these are still wet, I'll grab the tool and just pull that one line down in between on each of those. And there is a pointy tool in this set actually, which I'll use later on, I'm sure, but okay, switching back to that S4. I 
we're going to do some larger dots in here. And this is the desert turquoise color. Again, with our pointy tool, just coming in here to pull that dot out. You can see I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but each of these dots is probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch out past the Bahama blue dots that we did. So if you need some guidelines to give yourself a little bit of space in between those. And then again, just pull out that paint into a line. And we're not making like the teardrop, it's just the line. Okay, moving on to this 0.5 tool. It's a little pointier in the end. And I'm going to use it to make some swipes around those larger dots that we made. And it didn't quite go the whole way, so I'm going to grab the end of that tail and just drag it out a little bit farther so it completes all the way to the top of where I wanted it. I just want to say I'm new to using these tools as well so I'm just kind of taking them for a test run again to see what they can do how well they work with the paint I know a lot of people have gotten these already I'm a little late to the game but I figured I'd like to check them out because I love happy dotting company Angela has a lot of great ideas and I enjoy supporting the artists who have been re working really hard throughout all this time especially during COVID and just trying to keep their businesses going. So this seems to be working pretty well now that didn't give me a second, but I think if I would have varnished my turtle first, it probably would slide a little bit easier along instead of the wood catching it up. All right, so going back to that larger S4 ball end, and I have this lovely, lovely metallic. This is metallic teal from the Dazzling Metallics. And we're going to put a dot at the top of each one of these in between our little swipe and the desert turquoise dot. I actually have to be more reserved about not using metallics as much. <laughs> They're just beautiful. And we'll do this all the way around. Back to the point five. And I'm gonna go around the outer edge of this sweet little turtle with some bluegrass green. We're just gonna connect swipes all the way along. So I'll drag it out as far as it'll go, dip it again, start at the tail of the one I finished, go up as far as it will go again. So using the same amount of paint and the same size tool, you'll get about the same length swipe each time. And that way too, you're just getting a little bit of uniformity with the design. I'm just taking my time here along the edge, just using the edge of the wood as a guideline. You see it got kind of hung up there on the wood again. I think if I had varnished ahead of time, it would alleviate that, but I tend to skip that step and maybe I just feel like I want the challenge. <laughs> Actually, sometimes I'm just so excited to get creating. I miss that step. I probably should just do some ahead of time and have them all prepared for when I'm ready to paint them. But that would be the smart thing to do. So have you all gotten these tools? Let me know in the comments if you like these tools, what you think about them. I hear there are some challenges, different paints are 
challenging with it, but I'm finding them pretty easy with the deco art. And the deco art too, I'm hearing in other countries is becoming challenging to find. So I know it's on Amazon for the US. Um, I can't say for sure. And I don't know that they actually ship from their site directly on deco art. I think they might just do US and Canada. I'm not sure. Initially, I wasn't going to connect it, but I'm going to go all the way up, I think. And then just before they connect in the middle, I'm going to leave a little bit of space because I want to change the design and break it up a little with a few dots here. Looks like he's got a little necklace on. There we go. Just pull that out to even it out a little. Okay, so now the size one with a little bit of a blunt tip, but it's smaller, so it's, it is flat on the end. But I'm going to start over here, and we're going to do some S curls. I almost said on the wings. I got chickens on the brain today. On the <laughs> flappers, what do you even call these on the poor little turtle? His legs, his fins. You know what? I don't even know what they would be called. We're going to do some S curls on the side here. My brain is failing me at the moment. Flippers? Flippers. I think that's the word I want. <laughs> so I'm doing the larger white dots at the center of the S, and then as I work my way out to make it look a little more delicate, I'm letting the dots get smaller. So I'm actually grabbing paint from the dots that I've already put down so there will be less on my tool. And therefore, you will create smaller dots. And just work it around in a little curl there on the edge. I have to actually sketch this out. And I've used the edger to just kind of sketch it out ahead of time so I don't have to erase pencil marks. But my brain just doesn't want to flip the image sometimes. So I didn't want them to go the same direction. I want them opposite. And so this is like a backwards one. And same idea, start with the larger dots in the center, and then as you work your way out, just let them get smaller and smaller as you work your way around the curl part, at the top and at the bottom. And I'm just using white for this if your screen is causing issues. I know some people want me to mention all the paint colors because sometimes the colors on the screen are just not adjusting correctly. Or even sometimes when it gets uploaded, it doesn't work correctly with the transition. I'm not sure what happens with all the technical difficulties, but just so you know, this is white. And we have one on each flap, flapper, flipper. <laughs> I don't know why I can't think of what they're called. Okay. So now I am going to try to pull out some swipes, but this was the blunt end, so I'm going to use the bigger end to start the swipe and the smaller end to finish it. So it's the 1.0 to start it, and then I'm going to flip it to drag the point out with the 0.5 to just kind of help that paint into a smaller tail end here. And this is back to um, the desert turquoise. I'm sorry, the bluegrass green, which is the same around the outer edge. Bluegrass green. We're just going to make like a little fan swipe area here that looks like a fan. Or a water spigot. It could be either. And I'll go over at that after it's dry with a lighter color. I just want to get it tied in here and set where I want it to be. Okay, now I'm grabbing the Rich Espresso from the Dazzling Metallics. And this size one, and I'm just going to draw a little semicircle here, starting at the base of the turtle's neck. And 
then from here I can work on some dots that just kind of go following the arc of the semicircle that I put down. And now for the head, I'm just going to alternate the milk chocolate color and the rich espresso. Every other line will be either. So rich espresso, then this is milk chocolate, and I'm putting the dots in between the spaces of the dots of the line before. So then the next line will be rich espresso, putting the dots in the spaces of the milk chocolate ones, and so on, till we get to the um the hole in the turtle's head here. And this is all done with the same tool. I'm just pushing the dots around a little bit larger each time and adding a little bit more paint and getting a little bit larger size. You can see it's still the 1.0. Okay, and then as we get to the outer edge out here, I'm actually just gonna take that dazzling metallic, the rich espresso, and drag out one of the dots into a swipe to just kind of delineate the head of the turtle here. Rather than just kind of obliviate it with dots, I'm just going to drag it out here with two swipes. Okay, now moving on to his feet, I'm going to just alternate as well on his feet with the espresso and milk chocolate. And we're going to do swipes though instead of dots. Okay, so I needed to work on another section because I needed to fix a mess up on his foot with some more of the black background paint. So I'm going to move on to our raspberry here with the S2 size tool. And we're going to dot some little flower arrangements up here at the shoulder joint. And it's just a pentagon shape. So I do one at the top two kind of level with each other and then a little couple on the bottom smaller ones a little bit closer together to kind of give it that flower shape and then we'll dot some pollen yellow in the center after these are dry so just taking the raspberry and sometimes the multi-surface ones are a little bit of a different consistency so i just kind of have to squiggle it in here a little bit to get the dots and get the paint to connect with the wood. Just kind of wick it together there. All right, now moving back to the feet again. We're alternating, remember, with the milk chocolate and the espresso. So this is the milk chocolate. Every other line, espresso, milk chocolate, and I'm also flipping the swipes so they fit better in the foot area. So one from one direction, alternating the other direction. Each time I change a color, we're flipping the direction. And you can see that way they kind of fit in tail, head to tail, head to tail, side by side that way. And we're just going to do that all the way to the end of the foot on either side. Okay, while I have this espresso on the tool, I'm actually going to outline each of the flippers on either side with some dots just on the outer edge. And I did a larger dot towards the point of the flipper, and then as I'm going up, 
I'm getting a little bit smaller. And then it'll get smallest at the shoulder area. And we'll do that on both sides to make him equal on either side here. And going through here, I did get a little closer to the edge with that curl, so I'm just going to make a little bit smaller of an espresso dot. It's not really noticeable, but just kind of tag it on the edge there. And then smallest ones at the top. So now I'm using some coral blush. We're just going to add some decorative little commas in here, apostrophe, swipe, whatever you want to call them, at the base of our raspberry flower. There's a little too much on that tool, so I'm going to start the right side of that one. Sometimes if you can tell that you have too much paint, you don't want to drag it out because then the tail is going to be fatter. So if you can tell that you've loaded the tool too much, then just go and drop some off on the other side or on a piece of paper. And that way you don't drag it out and have to scrape it off and redo it. So now I'm using the 2.0 size and at the top under our little necklace thing that we made out of the bluegrass green, we're going to do two dots of the coral. And then I'm going to grab the pointy end of that 0.5 and we're just going to make two little teardrop shapes here, each one pointing towards the side of the turtle. And again, this is the coral blush. We'll put a little one next to either side of those teardrop shapes. So this is kind of similar if you saw the Sankey egg that I did, um, the decorative Scandinavian inspired Easter egg. This is similar to that idea where you're just kind of coming in and rather than working from your mandala out, these are kind of like details that you would put around the outer edge to kind of just give it a little pep, a little different design. So see, I have too much on the tool there. I'm just going to wipe it off and reload it with less. That's something you'll you'll start to gain the more you do this by realizing how much paint you're loading on the tool can result in a bigger dot, bigger drip, bigger mark. You just kind of be cognizant of that each time you're doing it. Keep the same amount that you want for each size design. And that just comes with practice. You're not going to be perfect at it right away, so don't give up. Please don't give up. This is so therapeutic and so enjoyable. I hate to hear when people just get discouraged and done. Just keep trying and try different things each time. Really just practicing. Really, each if you stick with one set of tools too, pick a set of tools that you enjoy, that feel good with the grip in your hand, work well with your paint, and just stick with them, and you will get better way faster than you anticipated, I promise. So I'm grabbing that 0.5 and we're going to go with some cadmium yellow and just kind of do some haphazard little dots in the center here for some pollen grains. And you can see I only put four dots in one and three in the other. It doesn't have to be exactly four because she did four exactly five because mine fits five on both sides it doesn't have to be it just gets that little pop of yellow in there to show the pollen area so we're going to kind of close in this design and make it so it's kind of symmetrical by putting some more flowers down here so you have four all together 
but it's not going to be able to accommodate the same design that I did at the top, just with spacing and everything and the shape of the turtle coming to a more narrow point. We're not going to be able to accommodate all that coral that we put at the top. So we'll just kind of adjust it here at the bottom. We'll still put our two flowers. And notice the pentagon's upside down now, so the, the flower is pointing towards the base on now. And I'll grab some coral and just do some little, little tiny, like, apostrophe ones down here. I'll probably just do that on either side of the flower. Again, it's not going to accommodate the whole full-on coral design that we did at the top. So you can see, you know, I'm not perfect with these tools either. My little tails don't come to perfect little points. You're just getting that little bit of color in that area. It's just like having different sized leaves in nature. I mean, nothing on here is going to be perfect, but it's mine. It's my art. And then you guys will have yours. You have your own design, your own spacing, your own amount of paint you put on the tools. It's just enjoying the time creating. So don't give up can't stress that enough. All right, so I'm coming in here with the S4, which is the large ball end and the cadmium yellow. And we're just going to kind of give a pop of yellow on the shoulder with a little, I don't even know what to call these. <laughs> so it's kind of like an apostrophe. You make the dot and then just pull the top part of the dot out rather than a whole teardrop shape. You're just pulling it off to the side, kind of like musical notes, shape of musical notes. Okay, so coming back in here with the eucalyptus color, we're just going to do a couple little leafy looking things in here with a dot and then drag out that little dot a little bit up towards the side of the mandala. I just felt like this space needed something here. Sometimes I'll see it on my screen and just realize that that blank space needed something. You could take pictures of your work and look at it that way too. Okay, I'm just going to do a little dot of the bright green here on either side. And then I'm going to use that bright green to actually highlight my fan area down here with the 0.5 and I loaded less, less, less paint on the tool than I did when I first created the fan. So where the, the bluegrass green was a little thicker and heavier, you don't want this to just obliterate out that color and block it out. You want to do less so that you're using it as a highlight and you can still see the bluegrass green from behind it. Any tool, just put a little dot in there. Less, less paint. That's the key to the highlight is less on your tool, even if it's the same size. Okay, so again with the cadmium yellow, our flowers need some pollen. We just tuck those in the center. And generally with this close-up work, I tend to wait until the other dots are dry before I do it. And I should have done that here because I got crowded in there because I didn't want to touch the pink and mess it up. So let's work on another area. And we'll put a couple little swipes here at the end of the flippers. until I can touch up that pollen when that's dry. Okay, so here is our completed little turtle. I'm kind of excited about this little tropical guy. It came out really, really sweet. I'm excited to share it with you all and hear your thoughts on it. Wasn't too bad, right? I promise.
Lots of fun details. Great paints. I hope you all enjoyed doing this with me today. It was fun to see the poll answers for animals. Everybody choosing animals. That was pretty cool. So I would love to hear what you think about this. So hit me up in the comments. Say hello. Just help out an artist and give them a comment and let me know where you're from. What you like best about the video future videos you might like to see, um, things like that. Come say hi. I look forward to hearing from you. All right. I hope you all have an awesome day and happy painting.